What is up everybody, Dan in the Fireman here. We're gonna be going over this motorcycle rider who's going to uh, fail a wheelie. He's gonna loop it and break his leg and then have really bad road rash on his body. We're gonna go and talk about the medical side, but I also want to leave you with a, like a why. Like why did this happen? It's kind of obvious that it was a failed wheelie, but there's the whole mental aspect that is involved with this. You know, we talk about peer pressure, ego, and all that stuff. As you can see, his leg is obviously deformed. There's gonna be some pictures towards the end. They're gonna be kind of graphic. So if you want to skip this whole medical video, please do so. And then I have other videos that I put out every single day. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell button, so you're notified when I do put out a video. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get some context to this. Once again, the original video will be a link in the description. And word of warning for anybody coming from my channel to any other channels with these types of videos, if you are noticed of writing anything derogatory or saying anything negative, I will ban you from this channel. The whole point of these videos is a visual reference of what to do, what not to do. I can make these videos myself, but I'm not going to go ahead and crash for every single video. So we are going to learn from other people's mistakes and we're going to learn from other people's uh, pros and cons. So let's not do anything dumb by getting ourselves banned from this channel. So uh, what I wanted to talk about with the context on this one, um, his buddy, they're in a big group. Uh, his buddy up front is uh, going to be going pretty fast and taking off on the line and we have our buddy here. So he's going 91 plus uh, miles per hour and this isn't going to be the part of the crash. This isn't going to be the cause of the crash, but this is going to give us a little bit of context when it comes to the mindset of peer pressure. This is something that's easily uh, done. I mean, you might have the best safety oriented mind here, but if you have a friend that you really look up to or you care about and they're the ones acting kind of weird and a little bit hooligan, you're going to probably do the same thing. Uh, it takes a lot to restrain yourself from peer pressure, um, trying not to look bad, uh, tr whatever it is uh, that, you've, that you don't want to do. So the buddy up front, he's going to be going uh, 101 uh, miles per hour. He actually says it with his hands. He does a 101 to his buddy and then uh, the guy with the MT-09, the one that's going to crash. So there's the one and then he's going to do zero and then one. He's going to laugh about it. It's going to be a, a, a big joke of, oh, wow, you know, he, he can only do 101 and, you know, I got the MT-09, it could do more. So that, that's kind of where the mental aspect is. At no point am I saying that he shouldn't be doing this. I think we've all had some fun uh, on a straightaway. We've tested our bikes uh, a little bit here and there. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm just saying is that let's go ahead and scale it down and let's make sure not uh, succumbing to peer pressure and ego. If we want to do it, let's do it, but let's not do it because somebody else, you know, is dictating our behavior. Let's Let's be our own people here. So I just wanted to show you that aspect, and this was right before the crash. Let's go ahead and go to the crash and talk about, um, you know, why and how actually that leg being broken is not preventable in this situation, even with proper gear. So here's the events uh, right before the crash itself. So he obviously knows how to do a wheelie, so that's going to take... Uh, some skill involved, okay? So you literally have to train for it. It's like doing a U-turn. You could practice, practice, practice. You can finally get to the point where you're doing U-turns like it's nothing within one or two parking spaces. Uh, speaking of which, if you want to practice your U-turn, ddiffincrew.com. Anyways, uh, this is going to take practice. So he's obviously practiced quite a bit. He's been doing his stuff. He's got some skill involved. It's just that, you know, when you do a U-turn and you accidentally put your foot down, that's perfectly fine to do and it's safe. When you're doing a wheelie and you accidentally loop it, it's not the same consequence. It's going to be very high mechanism, especially at this speed. We're going 48 miles per hour. It's going to be a high rate of speed wheelie fail, which is going to cause him to uh, loop back. And there it is. There's the moment of I lost balance. Just like if you lose balance on a U-turn, you put your foot down. Or if you do a tight turn from a stop, you put your foot down accidentally. That's perfectly fine. Slow speed stuff's perfectly fine. But putting your foot down, planting it when you're going 50 miles an hour is going to snap your tib fib. There's not much you're going to do uh, in that situation. It's going to plant and your rotational forces are actually going to snap those bones and you're going to have some problems so when you put your foot down right here so let's go ahead and scroll back just a little bit he's going to put his right foot down and that right there the right foot is going to catch and then his momentum and his body is going to fly over it uh, no matter what type of gear you have whether you have boots shoes or anything like that you're going to have massive rotation it might not snap at the tib fib with uh, let's say my icon 1000 elsinore boots you guys have been asking what kind those are 
absolutely love them. But uh, it won't snap in that area. It's going to go ahead and transfer the forces to the more weaker spots, which would be my knee or this person's knee. So yeah, it might not snap the tib fib, but the rotational force is going to travel up to the weak part, which is the knee. And now I'm going to have the ACL, PCL, LCL, the meniscus, all these different issues, possibly the patellar tendon. I'm going to have basically my leg be limp and be useless at that point and it could even travel further to the femur and snap the femur. So no matter what you're gonna do with any type of gear, that situation right here on screen is not gonna be prevented by having proper boots or proper gear at get all that stuff. So this is the risk that we're taking when it comes to doing wheelies, even at low speed or high speed, that we could have a possibility of, of a fracture. Everybody wants to have the top level bikes out there. I mean, MT-09 is a very powerful bike, and everybody wants that, but not everybody wants to wear the gear that the top level professional riders wear. Professional riders wear gear that is designed for low sides, high sides, abrasion, impact resistance from falling off the bike. It's not designed for being planted on the ground and then uh, preventing a fracture of that sort. So we're gonna move forward a little bit and he's gonna tumble, tumble, and tumble. This is why you need to wear gear for the secondary injuries, we can't prevent the, the tip fib fracture, but what we can also prevent is you know elbow impacts, shoulder impacts, knee impacts, hip, hip, hip impacts, back impacts, possibly chest impacts too. There's actually some gear out there for that. But, and then also the head impacts. So thankfully he's wearing uh, a helmet. It looks like it's a quality helmet and it's probably the thing that's gonna keep his brain from leaking out of his body. So he's gonna have a uh, road rash to the arms. And he's gonna have road rash to the legs. Now, this is another reason why you wanna have uh, proper fitting uh, gear. They usually have uh, hook closures on the wrist. Same thing on the elbows. When you have the hook closures on the elbows, there's sometimes if you have proper gear, there's gonna be like one or two or three spots to snap in. And that is to keep your uh, armor uh, situated on your elbow so that's another reason why you need to make sure everything is form-fitting not too big not too small so it's restrictive but you want to make sure you have the proper gear so we're going to get to the point where it's going to have a good picture so that is the tib fib breaking now this is just typical uh, jeans you know uh, Levi jeans that's not going to hold up in a crash you can actually see the the tearing in the jeans there but the impact so you're going to see what this is called an obvious deformity so it's not necessarily saying hey it's an obvious fracture it's not an obvious this this, it's it's a deformity um, so because you can easily have a dislocated ankle that will look like this you can easily have dislocated things that will look like this the shoe could just be you know off the foot just a little bit so when we do a scene survey and we come up to the scene we see something like this that is going to clue us in to the type of mechanism and the the type of injuries that we can can see around the body so if we see that Take a look at the chest, take a look at the upper body, like in the shoulders and, and the upper back. Take a look at the other extremities, take a look at the, the abdomen, because that type of force to uh, cause a fracture in the tib fib could be a force that can fracture a vertebrae, uh, a rib, the collarbone, the clavicle, uh, the scapula, all these different things. So just because you see one thing doesn't mean that there's not something else out there that could be life-threatening. So during your rapid trauma assessment, you're checking for life-threatening issues. So like a, a flail chest wound or a punctured lung is easily a life-threatening issue. Uh, external bleeding, internal bleeding even, uh, is definitely a life-threatening issue, especially if it's gonna be a large amount. So we wanna do our rapid trauma assessment, go from head to toe, check everything out, and expose the patient if you have the training. If you have the training, that's great. If you don't, I suggest taking an accidentscene.org uh, online class. There's actually $5 off right now if you uh, utilize my code. So check it out. It's a pretty inexpensive class, but you're gonna get a lot of good information on how to take care of a patient on scene. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward just a little bit. Um, during the video, he's actually yelling for his friends to call 911, call 911, call 911. EMS does show up, they're gonna be blurred out so it doesn't do a good job when it comes to showing you anything like what they did. But we're gonna go ahead and move into that area real quick. So he's gonna have a bunch of uh, his friends, I mean, remember it was a part of a group ride that he was yelling for one of them at least to call 911. EMS does show up within the video itself, it's about a 15-ish minute video and he crashes uh, relatively soon in the video and then EMS shows up pretty quick. So that's actually really good. And he's still on the street, so having somebody to block traffic or at least divert traffic around the incident is very important. Here's the uh, fire truck. He says engine on there. Um, and you can tell it's blurred out. But you can hear the uh, assessment that they're doing in the original video, so I highly recommend checking that out. But have somebody uh, block traffic. Have somebody uh, direct 
uh, EMS resources. Have somebody take care of the bike if the person on the ground is conscious and alert and not having difficulty breathing. Uh, have somebody uh, do the medical assessment and gather information. You know, having the patient's name, date of birth, where they live. That is very good information to have so that you can talk to the, the paramedic or the captain or whoever is going to have the clipboard writing things down while somebody's doing the actual assessment. That way the patient doesn't have to ask or answer those questions. And then that way um, when they're getting all their, their information, they can actually uh, uh, take care of the patient instead of having to do all the bureaucracy stuff. Because you know, at the end of the day, you still need to get good information. Date of birth is very important because then we can start ruling out, you know, heart disease, medical issues that caused issues, you know, diabetic issues. So this is this is all good information. There's just too much to jump into this. So guys, I really recommend taking a class uh, right now. Uh, I would highly recommend taking the online class and then trying to find uh, one local. So anyways, take a class online, use my code, get $5 off, and that way you can at least get a really good start on what to do when it comes to a motorcycle accident. So look, counterbalance like I'm doing right now. I'm leaning off onto this peg, putting a lot of weight, and turn the handlebars. Oh, when, it, when you feel like you wanna put your foot down, instead of putting your foot down, commit even more by putting more and more weight 